I think a lot of events take place and people order phone nuts, but we don't know about it. Like exactly, a few years we, we ago, don't do catering per se. Right. Gotcha. Like yeah. a few years ago, I remember a couple of people texted me, oh, did you know you're on the, what is the Kim Kardashian, the reality show? Keeping up Keeping with the up Kardashians. There. Right, so yeah. this was her first kid and they had a huge baby shower with these gorgeous cherry blossom trees in the house. I mean, it was just so extravagant. I guess it was on the show and because it was her first child. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, they had phone nuts there. And so I found it online or whatever. And you hear her say, oh my God, you have to try those donuts. They're amazing. This is Startup to Storefront, the podcast where we inspire entrepreneurship through truth. And today is our 100th episode. It's also the first time we've hosted a guest in our brand new podcast studio. We can't think of a sweeter way to celebrate this milestone than with some donuts. So with that being said, today's guests are Tom Furtado and Nancy Truman, the husband and wife duo behind the LA sensation Phonuts. Those that are in the know know Los Angeles is a donut loving city. There are many, many places that satisfy your sweet tooth, but a few rise above the rest. Phonuts has made a name for itself not only in the quality and taste of their donuts, but by making all of their creations gluten-free as well. They've come to our studio today to tell us all about how they became the creators of the Enlightened Donut. So listen in as we cover everything from their plans to become a national brand through franchising, why Nancy doesn't like to lead with gluten-free when asked, what's a phonut? And why the biggest struggle in running their business has always been hiring quality employees. Hang on, hang on. If you're not subscribed, can you go ahead and do that right now before we get on with the video? Helps us out tremendously. That's all we ask. And we're back. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the founders of Phonuts, Tom and Nancy. Thanks for coming on. Either Thanks one of you can take this question. Us. What made you want to jump into the vegan donut world? Well, it's actually more the gluten-free world because okay. all of them are gluten-free and about half of them are vegan. I was a voice actor for about 25 years and I was gluten intolerant, so I love baked goods. But 20 years ago, 15 years ago, there was no gluten-free to be found or at least any good gluten-free baked goods to be found. So, you know, I always loved baking, so I would just take recipes that I loved, started with the banana chocolate banana bread recipe of a friend that was so unhealthy. I mean, it had like two sticks of butter, two mm -hmm, cups of mm -hmm. sugar. I was like, whoa. And I modified delicious. it. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's delicious for sure, right? Yeah. That's why I took the recipe. And I just modified it over dozens and dozens of times, trying to get it as healthy as possible, but keeping that deliciousness so that you couldn't tell the difference. Took two sticks of butter down to three tablespoons of coconut oil, took the flour from white flour to almond flour and rice flour. And when was this? How many years ago was this? This was about 15 years ago. Okay. So at yeah. that point, like almond flour is not as good as it is now. No, I imagine, it was. Right? Almond it was. flour was. Okay. Yeah. Almond and rice flour were. Okay. Yep. And then I took, yeah, I took the sugar down to three tablespoons of sugar from two cups by letting the bananas ripen really well. And oh, I wow. called it Bonancy bread and I sold it at the <laughs> farmer's market. And that's kind of how Phonuts was born. That's Didn't amazing. think anybody would buy the loaf, threw some of the batter into the donut mold, called them phone nuts, and uh, that was it. It really? flew off the shelves. So you were samples out. solely at the farmer's market. That's it, and then, just at the farmer's market. So let me get this straight. Banana bread first, and then while still at the farmer's market, you started incorporating that into phone nuts as well, right? Yeah, I didn't okay. think anybody would buy the whole loaf of bread, the banana bread loaf for me. So mm -hmm. I put it in donut pans and called them phone nuts and sold them for a couple bucks. People could have the option. I put out samplers mm -hmm. and they flew in the pouring rain, flew off the shelves, like 65 loaves in a couple hours. And a friend of mine at the time came by and she was a, a pastry chef. She fell in love with the faux nuts. She quit her job as a pastry chef. We opened up faux nuts and I started formulating a bunch more recipes mm -hmm. gluten free. And so that's how it was born. Since then, she stepped out oh, and my so husband good. has stepped in. I just opened this and it smells amazing. The, <laughs> I've tried to make gluten-free products with my yeah. wife's gluten-free. Mm -hmm. It's never this moist. Yeah, the whole goal for me was if you come into the shop, 
I don't even like my employees to say we're gluten-free. They say, what's a faux nut? I say, it's a faux donut. It's baked, not fried. And we use almond and rice flour so that people who are not gluten-free won't even think, oh, that's gluten-free. But the people who are gluten-free will be like, ding, 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 so that we're not alienating those people who think gluten-free is disgusting. Yeah. Right. Because right? it's not. Our right. whole goal is to make it taste like the original. That you I've don't been even in know your store and people have asked, like, what's gluten? Like, I, like right. to the point of, like, I was thinking maybe they're visiting from out of town uh-huh. and they've never purchased anything gluten-free. Right. And so now they're starting to ask, like, what I would consider in L.A. to be a very elementary level question. Right. And it was shocking to me. What was the moment for you when you said, okay, the farmer's market's going really well. We're onto something. It's time to do like a retail strategy. It was that day when my friend came to see him, the very first farmer's market. She was texting me saying, I'm going to come and see you. She was with her boyfriend who was a fine dining executive chef. They were both fine dining executive chefs. I said, don't even bother coming. I have nothing left. And when, by the time she got there, I had two phone nuts left. Her boyfriend of the Times idea was like, you guys need to open a phone nut shop. I'm like, okay. And that was it. I did the farmer's market a couple more times. We found a space, and that's when phone nuts was born. What was the first space? The one on Beverly? Oh, yeah, it was on that? West 3rd. Yep. So you've been there the entire time. We've been there the whole time, wow. 10 years. Okay. Yep. Okay, 10, 10 years, years ago. And at that point, did you feel early to the market? Like, were you like... We were the first gourmet donut shop in LA, mm-hmm. and we're one of very few gluten-free bakeries in LA. There, there aren't very, there's a, maybe three gluten-free bakeries. There's a couple more couple now. A couple more now, yeah. yeah but, but you're dedicated, yeah. yeah. Dedicated, dedicated gluten-free yeah. bakery. And I know at some point you guys run out. Like, uh, yes, we do. So we used to go every morning because my wife would be like, we have to go early. Right. right. Like before That's running. Smart tip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before the hike, not <laughs> yeah. after the hike, because after it's, the hike they're all, right. Th- there's nothing, it's there's unpredictable, not you yeah. know. It's definitely unpredictable. Do you find it's seasonal as well, or is it just year round? Oh, it is seasonal. Sure, yeah. You know, actually, you know, you would think summer is our high season. It's like second highest. Really, March through May, June is 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 our highest season. Don't know why. It's that's weird. really interesting. Yeah, and you think the holidays are busy, it's right? Not okay, but that's not our killing time now. So, so right now yeah. you're in your your busiest. Yeah, we're time pretty of busy, year. and we yeah. just started really getting busier now that we've opened inside again. We mm-hmm. just o- reopened inside a week ago, and I don't know if it's because we're reopened inside or people are getting vaccinated, but all of a sudden we're just like busy again. It's definitely everyone else is gathering and so we're yes. seeing like dozens orders that we didn't oh, see yeah. all COVID. So you know, people dozen, are obviously six you know, dozen having gatherings right. and, and getting time. phone nuts for everybody. Yeah. You know, that was like our, our real, you know, sort of like tipped us into profitability was all the big events and the big right. orders. You know, once those went away we were just like Phew. Yep. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. So let's talk about COVID. So during yeah. so yeah. COVID hits. Oh, well, no more offices. So no more office parties, no more phone up Fridays where somebody's bringing them for the office. No more production, right? Hollywood's shut right. down. No more parties, kids' parties. You know, they used, people used to order five, six, ten dozen minis for kids' parties. Done. Or birthdays, weddings. No more weddings. afternoon coffee break. None right. Of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody's milling around the streets. Did you guys close completely? Because I know a big part of it is like going inside and seeing the donuts, right? And now that the inside's closed. Well, you know, so we saw the writing on the wall. You know, we were already slumping before the official shutdown, right? But, you know, when the official shutdown came, we were like, all right, we're we're joining that. Even though we could have stayed open because we're a food business, we just did not feel safe for our employees, for our customers, nothing. It was so unknown and seemed so dangerous. So we were just like, let's just chill for a minute. You know, we didn't didn't think it was going to be a year. Everybody thought, oh, a couple weeks, right? So we're like, we can do that. And then, you know, and that was March, our busiest month, right? So that was painful. And then basically, we were really lucky that Square added a whole online e-commerce module for free right when all that happened. I think they kind of, you know, they're planning to roll it out like as a paid subscription thing, and they just kind of offered it to all their vendors so that they could get some revenue in, right? So once we saw that, and I figured that system out, and when things started looking better, end of May... We said, okay, you know, we can do sidewalk pickup with this system, online ordering only and all that kind of stuff. And so we did that. What well. flavor did you have? I think this is the banana. Oh, that's the banana seed. That's, yeah. that's, that's the, the original 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 original. Original. Right. There's no sugar it. in the batter. Really? Yeah. These are shot. That's shocking. It's just it's extra just ripe really bananas. Ripe bananas. Yeah. They're so delicious. I mean, a part of the podcasting is like you have to be honest, yeah. but when products are amazing, they're just amazing. 
but no one yeah. believes it. They're like, oh, of course, <laughs> yeah, of he's course not going to say. say. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We're lucky that most people, and I mean, we've had like blue collar truck drivers come in after <laughs> yeah, delivering it's something. Kind of trippy. They're like, I don't know about this. And we hand them like a strawberry phone it, and they're like, this is the best donut I've ever had. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't go back, you know? And it's that's like the, the thing, Dunkin especially like, guy. so often, You'll hear someone say like, "Oh yeah, it's a good gluten-free version." Like this is just a good donut, right? Like yeah, let alone the fact that it's gluten-free. Yeah. Yeah. And you know when you we use all fresh ingredients. Like the strawberry is chock full of fresh strawberries. Mm -hmm. The blueberry when we we make a wild blueberry compote and we fold it into the batter and then we blend up some of it in a RoboCoop, which is a like a is this the blueberry? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the wild blueberry compote is also that's what the glaze is made out of. So it's all really high quality. We have incredible pastry chefs. You know, it's not just mm -hmm. a fried donut where you're cutting some dough, throwing it into some cheap fryer oil. And then putting cap. Totally on different. Top. <laughs> yeah. How do you guys view marketing? Like, how do you guys go out and market this? Is it social media heavy? Word, I mean, obviously, word of mouth is how I found out, which I think is probably the best form. But yeah, well, I'm actually like I'm going to school to learn digital marketing because before. COVID, you know, and it was just the brick and mortars and we were actually, yeah, so social media was heavy and we were, you know, trying to figure out sort of local marketing and some street marketing, trying to figure that kind of stuff out. And it was a brick and mortar strategy. And we were actually starting to think, okay, you know, lots of people want this in their town. Lots of people are coming to us asking if they can franchise. And I was like, let's figure out a franchise strategy for this, right? Mm -hmm. Then COVID hit and we're like, okay, that's not happening anytime soon. I mean, literally like in January, we were starting to go down that road. So then, you know, in the spring, late spring, you know, summer, when we saw COVID baking was a real thing, mm -hmm. I'd always had a vision to do the baker kits, like Duncan Hines style, but, you know, way down the road when we're an established national brand and we've already, you know, and we could just go straight to co-packers and straight to retail shelves. You know, I never thought DIY, direct to consumer, any of that. But then during COVID, we were like, okay, we're going to DIY this and do direct to consumer yeah. and let's figure out how to do that. And Digital marketing is the way to do that. So yeah, I'm actually at Demand Curve. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's uh, kind of a lot of people from Y Combinator have started this other digital marketing boot camp kind of thing. But they have, you know, you can get a coach and, you know, go along through all of the, whether it's SEO, SEM, on landing pages, social, email, all the different buckets. They'll work with you on projects that you use for your business as your homework and they iterate it with you and then you know by the end of the depending on how fast you go through it two to six months you've kind of built the infrastructure for your digital marketing for your business you, you, do you pay to go to it yeah okay. yeah and luckily there was a COVID discount and so yeah. sure it was it was a really our startup went through y combinator yeah yeah in 2015 so that's pretty cool i didn't realize yeah. they were doing that it's it's not them exactly but sure. it's kind of it's in related. concert with a lot of people from sure. there and, and uh, okay and yeah I kind of want to go back to something you said. You said you were thinking about doing this when you were an established national brand. So that's one of the things I, I was curious about was like your thoughts for expansion and how you do plan to roll out Phone Nuts as a national brand. Like, have you guys taken steps towards that? Maybe taking a step back because of COVID or whatever, but like, what's the process behind your sure, thoughts sure. on that? Well, now we ship nationally the, the Baker kit, so we are becoming that uh, direct to consumer and the Fotella. So, you know, we, we've definitely been focusing on that right now, but you know, I'm, I'm starting to think again, you know, now that things are opening back up and you know, hopefully things will, you know, will stabilize and continue to stay stable, you know, revisiting that franchising model as, as a possible other avenue to go down. Would you want to do it yourself? Like a couple more locations first that you guys own and operate Not before you franchise? really. It's, it's, okay. it's, you know, cause we've got two locations right now and that's, you know, enough for, you know, we're older and, and, you know, don't have as much energy. <laughs> so that was why we were thinking franchise would be great because someone else can deal with the day to day and we can just give all of that marketing and, and other support. And the other really cool thing for franchise model is that, you know, as we developed the dry mixes for the baker kit, which are the same recipe, okay, just a slight, you know, instead I'll of, instead of after. fresh yogurt, we found yogurt powder, but you know, just a couple changes like that. But otherwise the same recipe, once we figured that out, we realized, oh, well now we have a dry mix. We could actually sell to franchisees right? It makes and it control scalable. the recipe and, and not give away the recipe and, and have another revenue stream for the franchise model. What's the hard part about the business? Is it like shelf life? Like what's, what's the difficulty? Managing employees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely employees. You know, it's, it, unfortunately we're in that, you know, sort of retail employee 
turnstile where sure. it's really tough. Yeah, we're very lucky. A lot of our employees, for the most part, for hourly employees, they've been with us a lot of them for a while. Some, you know, there's always some turnover, you know, a certain percentage, but our bakers are just pretty steadfast and you know, the front of the house only leaves when really they've gotten pregnant or married. Right, or, you there's know, always some, life there's changes that away. move them right. We have a really great mm-hmm. crew. We all just adore each other, and it's just good. I know we talked about this earlier, but, you know, as these places are reopening, that we're being told the hard part is, like, finding employees all over Big again. Right. Because yeah. no one's incentive yes. to, incentivized to work. People are getting unemployment checks. Yep. Right. And so that's this is obviously impacting you guys. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that's been happening to us. Yes. What do you do? Cover front of the house. <laughs> so yeah, I've so been we work some shifts. Yeah. Front of the house, which is my favorite. Not. I'd much <laughs> rather be in the kitchen. I would like to be in the kitchen creating. That's sort of my happy place. But yeah, I've just been covering front of the house while we're getting people trained up and looking for people. Yeah, what I'm finding is, and especially after talking to other people in the same boat, I'll post for the job, and normally I'll get tons of applicants, and then I'll text them, hi, so-and-so, thank you for your resume. This is Nancy Ponitz. Are you available to jump on an interview call tomorrow at 3.30? And yes, absolutely. This past week, this has never happened before. I kid you not, like a half dozen, I would respond pretty quickly after I'd received their email. Crickets. Nobody responds. So they put in their application so they can you know, when they fill out their they unemployment check form, yes. they check mm-hmm. their, yeah, they check out the, and check the box. Oh yes, trail. I'm looking. Right. Yeah. right. I'm looking. Oh, okay. Are you? I don't know. Well, they don't have to. That's the problem with the system. They, they, all they right. have to do is like right. put a valiant attempt, which That's I would right. call just like a dusting. Yeah. You know, and then as long as they're yeah. checking a box saying, yeah, I, tr- yep. I tried. It's definitely gotten harder. You know, I have a few people now that are potentials. Yeah. But it, you know, it's taken you know, a week longer than it normally might. I mean, we're just lucky we get people to, to, to apply, but I see the difference even in our little world. Yeah. In West Hollywood, as I mentioned, like the Chamber of Commerce on the calls, this is the biggest thing that hotels are struggling with too. Like yep. ballet employees, just restaurant employees, oh, cop, yeah. baristas, they can't seem to fill the seats as the hotels are getting way more off. Oh, right. yeah, right. we right. need so people. Yeah. Oh, I heard about one restaurant had to close for two weeks because they didn't have labor. Imagine. After COVID, after everything, everything else. now they have to close because yeah, uh-huh. they can't find people looking for work who want to work. It's a combo of the unemployment checks and the stimulus and all of that. And a lot of people are going and following their passion. They're like, you know, why go yeah. back yeah. to that? You know, wh- Life short. let me find a business that mm-hmm. I want to start or that I want to follow. And so apparently a lot of people are going back to school. Right. And yeah, a lot of people, I've even noticed when I interview people, they've gone back to school. But I wonder if this is LA and the big cities because people have all left the big expensive cities and gone back to maybe where they were from, or if this is happening all over the country. Well, people have moved out of the cities. Also, you know, I, I saw a statistic, a chart, and it looked legitimate that food service, whether it's cooks, bakers, servers, all of the food service and all the hospitality were in the top of COVID deaths per job occupation. So, you know, if they didn't move or go back to school, they died. They're in the highest percentage of all, you know, job occupations. You were saying that it's like a hot topic, this whole thing about. Well, yeah, because, you know, like this one headline that I've been seeing a lot is basically, if a business can't afford to pay $15 oh, an hour right. or more, then yeah. they shouldn't be in business. That's Workers right. are sick of subsidizing owners that aren't willing to pay a fair living wage. And, you know, I, I get that argument. I think, you know, there's some validity to that. I guess it depends but, on the business. Uh, you know, it, it depends on the business. It depends on the location. I, right. I, I don't think that a $15 an hour is a, should be a national standard because, you know, Wichita, Kansas and L.A. are completely different, right? But I, you know, I certainly believe in a fair living wage, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I think we've always been able to be competitive with that. You know, we're not on the high end of that, but we're hoping to be able to as we, you know, grow a little more. I just I wish people knew the numbers. Like I, I remember we almost opened up a restaurant. I was helping a restaurant open and I got to see all the financials and this was a James Beard award winning chef. So they're coming with a lot of credibility yep. and, you know, there's a lot of hype and blah, blah, blah. And in looking at the numbers, they were making like 5% profit margin. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it just goes to show you like these businesses are next to impossible. Yeah. yeah. If you're a logical human being, you mm-hmm. wouldn't do it. 
Right. right. Which made me rethink about restaurants as a hospitality art. That's really right. what it is. Yeah. It's like you, you fly to Los Angeles to enjoy a culinary experience that you couldn't. Right. Right. And just like you paid for a flight and a bunch of other expensive stuff along the way, you should probably pay more. Yeah. Right. Because five yeah. percent doesn't keep the industry alive. No. Right. And it keeps two things happening, right? It keeps either the, the you'll see more McDonald's and yep. you'll see three Michelin star. And right. there'll be nothing in between. Right. So right. it's like everything's either corporate or super high end. Yep. Exactly. And now the family of four can't go out to dinner and experience right. a meal because it's way too expensive. Yep. And this is what's happening. And I think COVID just threw that into overdrive. Yep. Right. It's, it's a sad, sad truth. It's really sad. But it's like the consumer doesn't also understand the cost has to be offset somehow. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's this thing of like, you have to understand the simple math of it before you ask for astronomical things right. like we want $18 an hour. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, rolling in it. No, Come exactly. on. I mean, yeah. we're working yeah. our butts off. And I think most restaurant owners would agree. And it's, yeah. there's not a whole lot of return. Well, if you ask the consumer, the consumer says that they're willing to pay higher prices if that cost of product increase goes to employees or whatever it is. But then in actuality, you find that they don't actually follow through. So then these restaurants close down and then Mm -hmm. everyone's left blaming the other person. Right. And so it really is just this really tough area right now. And like Diego said, it's been thrown even more into a loop because of COVID. And so people are trying to figure out how to deal with it. And then also there's what uh, we were talking about earlier with $15 increase to minimum wage there was also the talk of hazard pay for right. all these frontline food employees grocery store employees and it's like certain industries were thriving for sure and maybe could afford it but it's not every industry and right. it, it should be a sliding scale right. i don't think you can hold someone to a black and white standard when it's very gray yep absolutely yeah a and, lot of people uh, are raising their prices now though I think they have to. It's the Cost only ingredients are going up. Labor's going Gas up. Is going, so, yeah, we're also seeing that know, inflation starting to yep. yeah. creep yeah. in, right? Yeah. yeah. I think one positive thing is that there's also now a lot more dialogue about universal health care because if that was around, mm-hmm. that would really help the situation as well, right? It would. You know, it wouldn't just be about wage only. When you guys first got started, did you bootstrap? Did you raise capital to start your business? Yeah, I wasn't around when, when she started. So. so my former business partner, she actually put up the capital. She really wanted to. And then afterward, I bought her out. Okay. And then Tom stepped in. And now she's happily on a farm and with horses and an- animals and on a ranch, you know. And she's loving it. So she's not tied to the business anymore at all? She's not. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. And nice. now since she's gone out, we've I've gone all gluten-free. Because she was doing the non-gluten-free uh, phone nuts. So I basically just took all those recipes, some of them, and modified them to be gluten free. What's your yeah. recipe creation process like? How do you decide to maybe add a new flavor or whatever? It might be like the um, the Fotella. Yeah. How was the Fotella? Bo- oh, so, I know. I challenged you. Okay, yeah. Because you know, so, I, I I wanted to have I lots remember. of sort of like seasonal flavors and whatever when I when I came on board. And so we had a seasonal flavor, which was the. Uh, the, no, it oh, wasn't, no, it, was, it, it wasn't it was an seasonal. Old, it was an old flavor. It was, we had a flavor that was chocolate hazelnut. So it was a chocolate phonet with a chocolate glaze and hazelnuts on top. That was a my favorite. A little bit of Malden sea salt, right? Mm-hmm. That's well, like... It what didn't sell that well, and it we did? had a regular chocolate. Yeah. It was okay, but not it's great. It's always me. Yeah. Yeah, not great. Yeah, and so, I'm, I'm your market. Yeah, I took it off. I took it out of rotation. Because you did and something else new. I yeah, think at I think that we, point. Yeah, well, we, at the time we had like a pecan pie. I think for Christmas, and that was chocolate with the pecans. So it was nuts and chocolate. So I took the chocolate hazelnut out of rotation and didn't put it back in. And we had a bunch of hazelnuts left over, which I, you know, in a kitchen. The enemy of the kitchen is waste. And so I kept them for a while. I was like, oh, God, I just hate to throw those away. Mm-hmm. So Tom's like, what are you going to do with the hazelnuts? What are you going to, he's like, why can't you think of something to do with the hazelnuts? Yeah, because we were trying to come up with a new seasonal flavor at that point. And I don't know how I figured like do a Nutella type of thing. I don't remember how it came to pass, but I started tinkering with quote Nutella recipes like chocolate hazelnut spread and just modified, you know, different recipes until, because I'll start with a base and then I'll modify whatever recipe I'm working with, like I said, with the banana bread and just to make it as little sugar as possible. So the, I also do that so the flavors pop. 
I'll start with one ingredient at a time and I'll modify till I get the right texture, the right flavor, and then I'll do another ingredient, you know, so it's just a slow scientific process. Do you have any dream collaborations? Like if you could collaborate on a phone app with, with someone? somebody or some, maybe like there's a variety of people, maybe people in the food world, I don't know, but then you release like the blah, blah, phone app. And right. Then, I'm just thinking like the social media sensation sure, of that sure, would yeah. also be pretty kind of cool. You know, we, you, know, I mean, people, you know, along the way, people have always said, you know, you know, who are you going to collaborate? And I'm, for some reason, it's just never I been know. a big part of the model. You know, we did the one. You did the one. Oh, yeah. I just recently. collaborated with Liz. She owns uh, Little House Confections down the street. They make olive oil cakes. So we collaborated. So now I have an olive oil wild blueberry I mean, I would love to work with Christina Tosi, but she doesn't do gluten-free. She doesn't do low sugar. None of it. I just like her, you know? She's just creative and I just yet. like her, right? She doesn't do it yet. Yet. Yeah. So we, we, we are we on of. opposite yeah. sides of the spectrum. She's like, whatever I can throw in there, I'll throw it in, which is great, you know? Mm -hmm. But we're so different. Any favorite events that you guys have catered? Well, we tried to cater the one thing for United Friends, and then it, we got rained well, out. Yeah, so, you know, our one sort of, you know, community social platform is, is with United Friends who foster children, and they specifically focus on older foster kids that are about to age out, and they help them get into college, help them find careers and housing post foster system. And so it's, you know, it's a personal soft spot for us, and so we found them, and, and you know, this is actually Foster Care Awareness Month right now, and, and I've been remiss. I haven't posted the uh, Foster phone up, you know, so we donate proceeds from our vanilla phone up every May. And then we also, you know, participate in their gala events and, and different fundraisers so and things like that. Yeah, um, I think a lot of events take place and people order phone nuts, but we don't know about it. Like, exactly. A few years we, we don't ago, do catering per se. Right. Gotcha. Like yeah. a few years ago, I remember a couple of people texted me oh did you know you're on the what is the kim kardashian the reality show keeping up keeping with the up kardashians there. right so yeah. this was her first kid and they had a huge baby shower with these gorgeous cherry blossom trees in the house i mean it was just so extravagant i guess it was on the show and because it was her first child yeah. and unbeknownst to me they had phone nuts there and you hear her, and so I found it online or whatever, and you hear her say, oh my God, you have to try those donuts. They're amazing, but they don't mention phone nuts. I found out about it through a baker of mine or an employee and somebody else who watched the show. So they didn't have so, like the phone up no, box nothing, or anything? No, okay. nothing. They've never mentioned us. They order mm. from us all the time. I was never about to ask mentioned. you if you saw a bump from that, but it's hard no, to see no, a bump if no mentioned. one knows the name. Well, right, so they didn't I'm sure yeah. there are We're so many events like that, but no, mm -hmm, you know, right. certain people, they're, they're not going to mention that it's phone nuts. You right. Know? How do you view that? Do you view it as like a missed opportunity or do you view it like... That would have been insane. It would have been insane. And we're glad that didn't happen. No, we would love it to happen. <laughs> I mean, afterwards, did you think about reaching out to them, being like, hey, we're glad that you enjoy our product or whatever yeah. it might be? Well, you know, we haven't been the best at that kind of, you know, PR marketing. We're, we're, we're starting to, you know. I'm starting to email we, and, you know, direct we, message. We people. thought back then, like, you know, oh, you know, we don't have their contact, so how can we reach out? And they're not going to read our DM. You're like, you know, these guys are, you know, way too big for that, right? Yeah. But we've learned since that, no, just try, right? right. You know, it, it happens more often than DM. you think, right? Yeah. So we're, we're starting to do that a little more. As we launch this place, we're working with a publicist now, and so a, a big part of the campaign, and, you know, my, my problem is I think I realize, like, I like data, and I'm like, what's the ROI? But what I've learned in entrepreneurship is, like, there's a lot of things that don't work like that. As an example, the mural behind me. You couldn't put a price on this. You couldn't put an ROI on it, but it lends itself so nicely to the space and the vibe we're trying to create. And so these are things that, you know, are completely what I call off an Excel sheet yeah. and there'll never be an Excel sheet for that thing. And so in the front, we're doing like a soft opening with influencers that are really big in the coffee space. And so they're going to be invited. They're going to have some swag and, you know, we hope they post, but they don't have to. It's more of like, come see the product. Everything starts with the product. If the product's amazing, you're going to get word of mouth and you're going to end up on every TV show anyway. And all we're trying to do is just is just make sure people are aware of the product, right? And so I've, I've shifted my focus to say, we need more people aware of the product. And if they happen to have a following, then let's make sure those people understand how delicious this product is. And if they want to share it with their community, great. And if they don't, great. More often than not, they will. 
And so we're doing, that's like one part of it. And then press is another part, LA Times, Eater, making sure they're aware of it. And there's also celebrities. So, so making sure there's a few people with big followings that come, but also like that care, like are considered in your world, a food expert or a foodie or loves donuts. Like someone's got to be out there that's like right. a donut fanatic and goes to every donut shop and makes oh, a yeah. review, right? There's got to be that person. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what we've kind of just leaned all in on, just making sure people are aware of the product yeah. because the product's that good. And the rest is kind yeah. of easy. I think influencer market, when you hear it, it sounds like, Ugh, like it's just, right. just so disgusting. Right. Right. But again, it just goes back to our product's amazing. This person has some, some semblance of followers that yeah. follow them because they taste coffee or whatever. And so let's just invite them. We had the, the same initial sort of reaction to the influencer, you know, paradigm, but I think it's, it's how you approach it and, yeah. and who you approach. Yeah, exactly. There's room for every angle for sure. Totally. So I know you guys serve coffee at your shop too. Is mm -hmm. that, was that always the case? Yep. Okay. We've always used La Mille. It's oh. an old school LA mm -hmm. coffee brand. They have one up in Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the La Mille up, up in Silver Lake? No. I've, been, I've walked oh, by it killer. 14 times. Oh, and gosh. You've got to go And in. I've always like just had a coffee. It's like one of those. Oh, yes. And I'm like. Yeah. 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 But anyway. I really well, like La Mille. We, we have love really the cold, coffee. good cold brew. We've had the coffee and, and coffee drinks, latte drinks at, at the Third Street Bakery. Mm -hmm. But then when we opened in Studio City, just a tiny little storefront space. And as much as we love the coffee and the, and the people who drink our coffee love it but it's never tipped over 10 percent of our gross okay so it doesn't all matter. the years so yeah. people are coming for the phone it's not the coffee so we were like we're not going to go into all that trouble yeah. for no real return talk yeah. about roi yeah and it's such a small space and we didn't have the space right. for it anyway so we decided to bottle it and first there was a guy from la mill that was bottling it himself yeah and these cute little whiskey bottles. And uh, it's cool, those yeah, little square flat ones. Glass flasks. And They're, so yeah, the flasks. We were carrying his, but then he got out of <laughs> that. Cool. He got out of the bottling and was just doing other stuff. And so we bought the rest of the bottles from him. Yeah. And because we were like, we cold brew our own anyway. Yeah. And so we just started filling it ourselves. And so we sell that out of there. We haven't really been pushing it enough. We need to push it a little more, but a cool little item. Yeah. People love cold brew because you can just yeah. grab it. Oh, yeah. And the bottle you. feels yeah. good in the hand. It's like, looks like you've got something. And it's our number one seller in the shop is our, you know, iced cold brew, like it's you know, so iced good. lattes and things it's like, like that. You know, that's our number one seller anyway mm -hmm. of all the coffee drinks. I'm just thinking it's completely opposite. Most people, like, so you always hear of the person drinking whiskey out of a coffee cup to hide it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're the, the opposite, opposite way. Totally. Opposite. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Will that be part of the franchise model too, the coffee? Or at least the cold brew, you think? It's easy, yeah. right? Because you just need a refrigerator, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Spray. We could, yeah. you know, the, well, the bottle for sure. I think it's still worth having it if, you know, if, if you got the bakery retail space, you know, having the barista experience is really nice. It's, it's, it's to definitely. To me, they go hand in hand. Definitely just, adds yeah, a whole. For me too. But oh, yeah. I got to have Experience to That's it. That's just me. Yeah. Is there anything that you found out about your customers that you may have not thought originally? Like being in LA, everyone's so fit, but clearly we all love delicious mm -hmm. items. Or maybe like older people, grandparents love your, I don't know. Is there some data that you found? Well, the one thing that I, you know, because when I came in and, you know, for one thing, I looked at the numbers and, and the reason we decided to go all gluten-free was two reasons. One, I looked at the numbers and that was the category that sold the most. Okay. Except for the blueberry and strawberry, which weren't gluten-free. They were the only non-gluten-free heroes. That sold, yeah. Everything oh. else was the gluten-free and vegan. And so I said, you know, so the numbers don't lie. But I said, most importantly, you know, Nancy started as a gluten-free concept. The owner should be able to eat anything on the menu. Yeah. Right? And she right. couldn't eat half the menu. So, and then thirdly, anecdotally, everyone we met in L.A., they're like, oh, Phonuts, the healthy donut place. Like, even though Nancy said they purposely were not promoting that part of it, right. that was the consumer identity of, of Phonuts. And so we said, let's just lean into that. And so that's when I came up with the Enlightened Donut as sort of a, anyone can read whatever they want into that, you know, it could be healthy or it could just be whatever you think enlightenment is, right? right? So that was kind of surprising that despite her effort to not play that up, that was really the, That's smart. the main identification. You with just the leaned brand. into what you believed in. I just followed And it him. made sense. <laughs> How many says. phonuts do you guys eat a day? I just had one today. <laughs> Although I left you one bite. As many as I can, but that's yeah. usually, you know, I'm usually leaving for the customers to get. Um, sure. I had one. I had the chocolate chip cookie. I left you one bite and I forgot to give it to you oh, in the car. <laughs> and for people listening, how much are they? How much is like a six pack of the bigger ones? 
or the normal size ones, I guess. So the six pack is twenty seven dollars, four fifty each. Um, four fifty each. Yeah. If you know things, you know, keep going the way they're going, we'll probably have to, you know, raise the price incrementally a little bit soon here. I mean, you know, we've, we've only, only raised, raised our price once, once in ten years. Wow, oh. and that was when I came on board, and they hadn't been raised at all, and we yeah. were like, we got to raise the price a little bit here. So you got to raise mm -hmm. the price. Yeah, and speaking yeah. of price, what's interesting is once in a while you get that person who doesn't quite understand what we're doing, and so they'll compare it to a regular donut. How much is a regular donut? Like. At 60, 89 a cents, maybe. Or whatever, you know, depending on okay. where you're going. But what's interesting I mean, not, is. Obviously, not somewhere like Sidecar. We're, we're actually. Pretty much the same yeah. price as them, yeah. We're actually on the low end for what we do and what we use for ingredients. For gluten free Because vegan. there's a couple of, quote, gourmet donut shops in town like Blue Star Donuts or Sidecar, and they are also, I think, four fifty dollars each. But they're not using really high quality expensive ingredients like right. almond flour and rice flour and all fresh fruit and wild blueberry. Com they're not making a wild blueberry compote. Their money's in their packaging. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I, I, they might be they doing might be you know, a little bit more. They've got some chefy creations. But I, I'm not they gonna, do I have some chefy for but, you know, sure. They, no, they no, no. I'm not dissing stuff. them, but I'm saying in terms of like the base ingredients, it's yeah. white flour, which costs. Right. You know, it's significant yeah, pennies. Yeah. There's no comparison. I think this is the hard part about companies like this. It's like it, it fundamentally costs more money. If you get an almond milk latte, it costs more money than just it a dairy. It costs way more, right. and yet we're the same right. price. That's what right. I'm trying to right. say. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, you got to raise your price. Not that they're using cheap ingredients, but they're not using almond flour, which is just a That's beat one of the down. biggest, yeah. You know, so we always tell people if, if they're having a hard time conceiving the cost, I say, you ever bought a pound of almonds? You see how expensive that is, right? right? Yeah. You know, translate that to, you know. It's so nice of yeah. you. I would have just been like, it's not for you. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I know. I used to go to a barber shop where he would raise the prices 50 cents every year. Every wow. single year. Wow. And I would always get so mad at him. Now you know why. As a kid, I was a kid, and I'm like, right. Well, because my birthday is in January, so oh, what happened is right. my birthday haircut would be like right. more expensive. Right. 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 Like, Can right. I get last year's rent? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you know, my rent's gone up. <laughs> That's what he would say. He would say, you yeah. know, the government doesn't care about your birthday. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm 12. Can we not talk about the government? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just get a haircut. It's a tough realization. Just give me that, that 50 age. cents. <laughs> yeah, but I always thought, so it wasn't until I was like 18 where I was like, That's actually really intelligent of I him to see do. Which ones you guys ate. And he also trained the customers, right? The customers were, yeah. at yeah. that point, like they, everybody expected it. Yep. And he mm -hmm. would just be like, when I first started, that gas station was 60 cents a gallon. There you go. Look yeah. at it now. And yep. then everyone would be like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Ma yeah. And then no one would care. We go back to barbershop right. talk. Like my utilities have gone up. And, yeah. T totally. Yeah. It's not like your, your rent goes up every year, too. Your oh, rent yeah. goes up every oh, year. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys view as like your next big thing besides maybe franchising? Anything else? Or is that what you, where you guys are focused Baker on? Baker mixes. Well, yeah. Like, Baker I, like mixes, I said, yeah. we're really yeah, trying to push people. that. Yeah. So, you know, we tried to really make it an experience. Do you for the how-to phone -ups videos? Wait, wait. Okay. So, if I get a bakery mix. Yeah. Okay. First of all, that box, as you notice, it's the half dozen box. Yep. So, when you finish baking your six phone -ups, then you can put them back in that box and then bring them to a party, party or something. give them as a gift. What is this? What is this? That's the white stripe line that we put on our signature white so stripe line. So this is frosting. Line. So that's pre-made yes. frosting and you just cut the corner and then you've got yeah. a little piping bag. Shape. It's beautiful. Thanks. Okay, this is batter. So if I were to make yeah. this, I make, I add batter. I take the batter. What do I add to it? So where's we're your instruction in card so, right there? So yeah. yeah, it okay. says we need a phone up pan. Well, any that kind of pan. Like, with, yes. Well, we, oh, we okay. actually didn't bring the phone up gotcha. pan that we use, and and so um, but just like I said, any the, pan. Yeah, no, yeah. the kit comes with the pan. Oh, gotcha. How much is the kit? Thirty-eight for all of it with the pan that you reuse over this and over. Right yeah. Thanks. That's all, Tom. Well, I created is this on your the social mixes. media. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. Yeah. No, and I've been doing some you know social ad buying and that kind of. Thing. We need to can you add can you add almond more. milk instead of tape uh, the water? I think that would work for this one. Oh no, this one doesn't take milk. This takes oil and egg. Oil and egg. I've used olive oil before and it worked great. It says three tablespoons water. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically. I mean, everybody has water, so all you need is all yeah, oil I, and egg. I challenged Nancy when we were developing this to really keep the the ingredients that someone has to add to the most basic. So, for example, that's why we found yogurt powder, you know, because not everyone has yogurt. I don't want someone to have to go buy yogurt, especially during COVID, you know. That's what keeps me up from, like, cooking, by the way. It's, like, the one thing I right, don't right. have or the two things. Right. Exactly. And, and, and like, so I'm out. I'm out. 
This has know, buttermilk powder. In, in our okay. vegan recipes, okay. we give you a packet of applesauce and a packet of vinegar because not everyone has white vinegar and not everyone has applesauce, right? So literally just egg, butter, plant milk, oil, water. That's all you need. Like basics to make this. from your kitchen. Like yeah. the vegan recipes, all you need is oil and plant milk, which That's most vegans use. have plant milk in we their house. We use good milk. That pan is the exact same one we use in the kitchen, the one that you get with the kit. The recipe is exactly the same. The half dozen bucks is exactly the same. So it's, you know, as close to the come to get it in the store experience yeah. as we could get for yeah. you to do it in your home. Speaking of marketing, we just started doing something called Pop Shop Live. Do you know what that is? No. No. It's QVC for Gen Z, basically, and it's app based, but it's live mm. shopping and it's chat it's based so there's a chat screen going while you're doing your live show and, and then you can so even sweet. you can even bring someone that's in your chat you just touch the touch their icon and invite them to a FaceTime and it'll split the screen for you and you can engage with your customers do they pay right to be part there. of it or is it free what's that do they pay or is it free like the, the no, people no it's all free it's okay. all free yeah, yeah. um Ooh. you know i mean pop shop makes its money they take a tiny cut of cut, ours but yeah it's right a way smaller cut than say a delivery app takes right yeah and uh yeah. it's just super high engagement and it's it's really fun yeah we just did our first show a couple so they Last they were Friday. they started with collectibles and you know things that obviously were much easier and like you know beauty makeup and things like that and then they wanted to expand to food, so they invited us to be part of the first, they called it the farmer's market. You know, they envisioned, you know, just having lots of vendors, you know, queued yeah. up that you could go down the, the queue. And uh, so we did that, had a great time, great response. We just did one hour, but, you know, some vendors are on all day. You know, they'll just do an yeah. eight-hour yeah. show, you It's know? exhausting. Um, yeah, that would thing, be. Yeah. The we, it was the camera. All well, that would be. But here's yeah. the funny thing is that it was exhausting for us because we were, like, trying to be on the whole time and yeah. everything. Right. But I right. watched some of the other shows. It's so casual. Their kids, yeah. their pets are coming through there, and yeah. there's like dead air. They're just like, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's checking it's, Instagram. It's it's not like QVC in that way. It's not yeah. on okay. on. It and people don't have that expectation. It's, <laughs> it's so yeah. much more casual. Yeah. It's Even watching really kind of cool. Is exhausting. Right. Right. Yeah. Just calm down, bro. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We felt we had to be like the sham wow so guy. So now the I'm whole just time. gonna be yeah. like yeah. a little more chill. But I baked the whole kit. We had she, an hour. She ran through the kit. I ran through the kit. You can actually have the batter done before the oven's even preheated. It's that easy. So you can have the it, batter. It takes longer to I never do that. Every Bad cooking line. instruction ever, it's like preheat your oven first. And I never do that because <laughs> all of the prep work takes so long. No, if this you have your doesn't. egg and your yeah. oil already there in your little mm -hmm. quarter cup, mm -hmm. turn on your oven, throw the batter mix into a this. bowl, throw your two eggs, throw your three whatever tablespoons of water and yeah. a little bit of oil, mix it up, your pan is sprayed, your oven will not be preheated yet. It's that fast. And then when the phonets are baking, then you can make the glaze. It's so easy. The longest, hardest part is letting them cool long enough afterwards. Mm, right. Because if the you resistance. don't, then the glaze doesn't you know, right. work out. But so many people post it and we're like, they didn't let the phonet wow. cool. We yeah. can tell, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> right. soaks in the glaze, yeah. Because <laughs> they want to eat it. They're getting excited. You know? Yeah, they it's it. hard like, to get it. We get it. Right, right. I love That's the hardest this part. so cool. It is ingenious. Thank you. I'm excited to hear it what you're did all of the. He's basically the head of packaging, head of HR, head of construction, head of marketing. <laughs> design. He's the head you know, of, he designed, designed the all our boxes. Yeah. These are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm trying to do everything so she can just be the creative genius in the kitchen. But I unfortunately, she is left doing some managing day to day. Well, I'm but. excited to try this. Thank yeah. you guys for bringing me one. Of Tell course. us everyone where they can find you. Obviously, your locations and then phonuts.com. It's media. pretty easy. You know, phonuts is our tag on every social channel and phonuts.com. We have one on West and, Third and, Street. And, you know, shop.phonuts.com is, you know, you just go to phonuts.com and you'll link right through yep. to that. So these are available. You we know, like people to come sipping. in the shop, though. It's yeah. The yeah. Sit at the bar, yeah. have a coffee. Where is the one in Studio City? On Ventura Place. So okay. it's just right at like oh. Ventura and Laurel Canyon mm -hmm. where okay. that little triangle street where yes. Jones on third is. They have the oh, Farmer's Shell Market Gas on Station Sunday. There. Yeah. Call it the Melrose Near Place El of yes. the Valley. Right. Alfred, <laughs> coffee. Mm -hmm. I play there. at Weddington. I play tennis at Weddington sometimes. Oh, gotcha. And that's like it's right, right there. down the street. Right, right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming on yeah. in person. Thank you very much. Thanks oh, for having us. This has been a lot of fun. pleasure. This is a great way to break in the new studio. Yeah. I love it. You know what you'll love is, you know, you're you're a data guy. You know, when I got Google My Business set up oh, yeah. and was looking at the back end dashboard, and they have that heat map of where people yeah. search for your for your address, you know, and, and map you. Where do you think in LA would be the highest percentage of people 
mapping our location. Santa Monica or West Hollywood? Yeah, good guesses. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Diego? Uh, based on the question, I'm going to go. <laughs> it's going to be an outlier, right? <laughs> I know. He's going <laughs> to. I really don't know. Van yeah. Nuys. Yeah, Beverly Hills Van no, Nuys. No, LAX. LAX. Whoa. Like, we knew from crazy. social posts that people would say on their social posts, like, oh, you know, making my first stop in phone nuts, you know, or planning They're my trip serious. around phone nuts. And then when I saw that, they literally go from the airport you to phone You should put nuts. a wow. billboard at LAX. I, I know, swear right? we should. Or, or, or have or like a little up a phone Or open up a I truck. Know. That was, that was part LAX. of, you know, we were thinking about that as part of the expansion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, that's a whole different beast, though, from what I hear. But nonetheless, but nonetheless, you know, one day, one day. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Oh, our pleasure. Thanks for having us. This has been, been great. great. Awesome.